Good evening. My name is Sky Miller and I am the co-chair of the Academic Affairs Committee of Student Council. Welcome to Who's Connecting Politics. This week we'll be doing Who's Connecting Politics, Foreign Policy. Tonight we have many members joining us tonight from different international relations organizations on ground. Our first uh, member tonight is um, from the University Democrats. He's Mr. Edward Smith. The University Democrats is a contracted independent organization at the University of Virginia dedicated to developing progressive leaders and getting the Democratic candidates elected to office at every level. Their membership meets weekly to learn about how those candidates get elected or how to elect those candidates as well as to learn about various issues, causes, and groups. We're all, uh, they're all about campaigning, community service, productive debate, and having fun. Our second member tonight is Mr. Matt Worman from the College Republicans. The College Republicans chapter at the University of Virginia is a political organization dedicated to promoting Republican principles, electing Republican officials, and providing fun and entertaining speakers, debates, parties, and more. Our third member is Mr. Dylan Brewer from the Young Americans for Liberty. Young Americans for Liberty is a student activist group with the goal of promoting classical liberal libertarian viewpoints. Efforts will be made to host informational events, hold activist campaigns, and promote membership in libertarian organizations. Our third member tonight is Ms. Hillary Hurd from the Wilson Journal. Since its inception in 2004, the Wilson Journal has been the principal respiratory for undergraduate scholarship in foreign relations at the University of Virginia. Under the auspices of the International Relations Organization, who's also joined us tonight, um, the Wilson Journal seeks to promote discussion and knowledge of world affairs by selecting 10 to 12 outstanding undergraduate pieces each seminar for publication. Additionally, the Wilson Journal offers one $3,000 grant each spring to finance a field research project. The next person joining us tonight is Ms. Melanie Swick from the International Relations Organization. IRO is a contracted independent organization that is run entirely by students. Their membership ranges from engineering and education, or education school students to philosophy and foreign affairs majors, um, but all share an interest in current international affairs. IRO's activities include promoting international relations around grounds, offering a speaker series, participating in model UN conferences at other schools, and featuring two of their own, Vayman and Vix, and finally sponsoring the Wilson Journal of International Affairs, as we already discussed. Um, Mr. <laughs> Joseph Riley is the Alexander Hamilton Society <coughs> rep. Um, he is uh, the, uh, the Alexander Hamilton Society at the University of Virginia is dedicated to promoting constructive debate on basic principles and contemporary issues in foreign, economic, and national, national security policy. In pursuit of this goal, uh, the Alexander Hamilton Society sponsors open events and provides opportunities for our, our, their members to flourish intellectually, professionally, and personally. Tonight is a special seminar, seeing as we have some members of the group that are not affiliated with any um, political campaign during this election, but because they offer um, good input into, into the international relations discussion and the foreign policy discussion, um, they're here tonight. So those two members are Melanie Swick and Hillary Hurd. Um, they have no uh, affiliation with any ideological base. And then tonight we also have Joe Riley and Dylan Brewer, who are representing ideological bases but do not affiliate with any specific um, uh, uh, party member um, in the election uh, this, this time around. So, and then finally we have um, the College Republicans and the University Democrats, which by name um, mean that they represent their candidates in this year's election. Um, so to start the discussion, um, the way that this is going to work is that we'll have, um, like last week, we'll have questions that are asked and then we'll have about a 12 minute discussion on each question um, and we'll go from there as far as um, what topics we discuss. So the first question I'd like to ask tonight is, what would you propose is the best detention policy for um, terrorists and why? Please include an explanation of where they, they should be held in, cap in captivity. And does anyone particularly like to start? Any ideas? Uh, first off, I want to thank you so much for hosting this and thank all the other panelists. I think it's a great thing that we're able to have this and I want to thank you guys so much for coming. It should be really fun. Uh, the president believes that uh, his most important job as commander in chief is keeping Americans safe and making sure that we obtain information from people who are trying to harm us. However, uh, the president believes that this must be done that in a way that's consistent with the United States values. That's why he is committed to a no torture policy. He believes that torture is ineffective. It doesn't actually get the information that we need. He believes that it hurts our reputation abroad and makes us look bad uh, in front of our allies and in front of the rest of the world. And he believes that it's just un-American. He believes that the America is best not only when it leads by examples of our power, but by the power of our example. Um, when he first started office, he issued an executive order uh, attempting to close Guantanamo Bay due to a number of constraints uh, domestically. The primary reason 
being that people didn't want to have um, enemy combatants in their congressional district. Uh, he was unable to close Guantanamo Bay. However, the number of enemy combatants has gone down. There has been uh, less torture, uh, actually no torture in Guantanamo Bay since then, and uh, it's not the same place that it was four years ago. Um, Governor Romney, on the other hand, um, wants to make sure that we have the same uh, interrogation techniques that we had during the Bush administration that even uh, John McCain believes are not the best way to move America forward. And like, like I said again, thank you guys so much for having me. Appreciate it. I'll, I'll jump in. Uh, I too uh, want to thank uh, Sky and as well as the other panelists uh, for, for hosting this forum. Um, I do want to also preface it by saying I am by no means an expert on foreign policy. Um, I'm an architecture student and so uh, I will do the best of my ability in this, this forum, but I just wanted to preface that uh, with that. Um, I think I want to start off by saying that um, in 2008, uh, President Obama clearly did make a very strategic and a, uh, and, a, and a promise to close Guantanamo Bay. He, on day one of his presidency, he signed the executive order to close it. And to this day, Guantanamo Bay is still open. Uh, I think where that shows that, uh, that on this issue particularly, um, in regards to where captives should be held, uh, the Republican uh, policy of, of having uh, these, these civilian, or excuse me, not these civilians, these uh, alleged terrorists uh, on, uh, or not on our uh, American soil. And, and I think uh, what Edward was saying about not wanting these, these alleged terrorists to be in our own backyards is very correct. And I think that, that for that reason, um, I think he's right in, in saying that the president has failed to do this. But again, that's a failed promise uh, that this president has not been able to, uh, to keep. Um, in regards to, uh, in regards to uh, uh, interrogation techniques, I think uh, Edward is incorrect when he says that uh, Governor Romney supports the same uh, policies as uh, President Bush. I, that's just simply not correct. Governor Romney certainly does believe in enhanced interrogation techniques, but he does not condone or support torture uh, to receive information from these alleged terrorists. So with that, thank you very much. Yeah, I just, I actually have a question for Ed. So you said that the uh, number of combatants at Guantanamo has gone down. Uh, the number of combatants who are, you, who are can, uh, subject to inhumane uh, terrorist, te or interrogation techniques has gone down. Uh, and the second executive order that the president announced when he got into office in 2008 was a thorough investigation of all of the enemy combatants in Guantanamo Bay. And then he assessed how they were being interrogated and the type of information that we were receiving. And the number of uh, those enemy combatants who have said that they have been treated in inhumane ways has gone down. So, but the, the number of non, the number of individuals being held at Guantanamo Bay hasn't changed under the president. Oh, no, oh, I, I misspoke then. No, not the number of individual combatants. I'm talking about the number who have complained of inhumane techniques has gone down. The, the entire um, system of interrogation at Guantanamo Bay has changed in the four years since the president's And have we apprehended new individuals in the continuing war on terror that normally would have gone to Guantanamo, and if so, if, if we haven't sent them to Guantanamo, where are they going? Um, I know that here's a number of international courts, or international prisons that they have gone to, um, but they still do go to Guantanamo Bay. I think the president now is moving towards reforming Guantanamo Bay and making sure it's not the same place that it was during think, the Bush years. I think it's important to note here that that's clearly a flip-flop um, from this president. You don't want to talk about flip-flops. Who made a promise in 2008 that he was going to close Guantanamo Bay and he's failed to do that. Yeah, I, mean, I, I think that um, I think that what uh, Mr. Smith said about about the idea behind uh, getting rid of torture is really important because I think that what what we need to remember with regards to all the enemy combatants, is that they're all individuals, and they're all uh, you know innocent until proven guilty. And I think that uh, a, a large step towards actually incorporating this uh, you know innocent until proven guilty mechanism would be to hold them on American ground and afford them the full rights that Americans would to trial. And I think uh, I think a lot of the things that Obama said about um, or during his campaign were were very positive towards this um, this policy towards enemy combatants, but he really hasn't changed that much. Um, and I, I, I don't think that's a good thing. I wish that Obama would follow through. So can I just ask a, a question then following off of that? So do you think that the U.S. treatment of enemy combatants 
should be the exact same as U.S. treatment of U.S. civilians in facing court in terms of due process and what rights are due. And you said there's until yeah. proven guilty, but does it follow then like all terrorists are entitled to a lawyer or anything that would naturally like be afforded a U.S. citizen in case of trial? I mean, that's a pretty broad statement to make. Right. I mean, U.S. citizens aren't. Well, U.S. citizens are not like constitutionally they're not supposed to be given a lawyer just as you have the right to a lawyer and they've taken that to mean that you that they will provide you a lawyer if you can't afford one and so i think that maybe i don't think that necessarily they should be provided a lawyer but i definitely think that they should go through a lot of the same due process things so i think that the perspective that everyone is that a lot of people are missing is that these are individuals and a lot of them may be innocent for all we know I think, I think there's, I mean, they are individuals, and if we do bring them to our soil, then yes, we owe it to afford them the constitutional rights that we afford everyone on the soil. I think the question is whether or not we bring them to our soil. There's, you know, do they, they're not guaranteed to any American constitutional rights when they're still in Afghanistan. We don't, by any means, extend our constitutional rights to people all around the world, certainly not areas in which we're engaged in open conflict. There's a law of war in the Geneva Conventions that deal with the manner in which we uh, treat those combatants, in, in which, in all honesty, the Bush administration did not have the best track record of dealing with that. My uh, point that I would make to, you, uh, to, to President Obama or to you, Ed, is that um, so in the name of not bringing more enemy combatants to Guantanamo and, 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 and dealing with that situation more ethically, what we do now more often than not is just turn the combatants over to the Egyptians or the Iraqis or the Afghans who then torture them and we didn't, then happen to you know, benefit from the information that comes as a result of that. So I don't know that we're, we're winning an ethical argument if we're saying, well, we're not going to do it, but we're more than happy to turn them over to you and let you do it. And then, you know, if you don't mind telling us what they told you in the process, then that'd be great. Um, what I can say is that I believe the president's main concern uh, on this issue is making sure that we have the information and that we also treat the people who we interrogate and who are held captive by us in a humane way. Um, and that's why he did issue that executive or order saying that, you know, we're going to stick to the uh, humane interrogation techniques that are approved by the Army Handbook um, and that these are the type of policies that were not followed by the Bush administration. And just to clarify, uh, one of Mr. Romney's actually did say uh, he wanted to rescind and replace President Obama's executive order and permit enhanced interrogation techniques. He said that in Charleston uh, in the middle of December of 2011. So um, the Romney uh, position is to, I believe, is to rescind uh, the executive order that the president set on his second day in office, going back, and therefore going back to but the administration policy. The governor supports torture, and, and the phrase enhanced interrogation techniques does not necessarily mean torture. It includes waterboarding. I think, it includes waterboarding, which, which John McCain said is torture. I think, I think that your, your, your definition of the word uh, it does not necessarily line up with Governor Romney's, and I think that you're, you're skewing uh, that phrase to, to mean what you meant to mean. Do you have anything? Um, I think just going back a little bit ago to um, putting sort of a blame on uh, President Obama on whether he was able to get Guantanamo Bay closed, I think I would just interject really quickly and, and say that um, I think that's been used a lot in this campaign and I think it's important that we recognize that it's not necessarily entirely within his power. Um, Congress plays a big role in whether or not Guantanamo is eventually shut down and I think that says something about um, the state of politics of our nation and how we feel about uh, the issue. So as far as the campaign goes, I just want to sort of like make that balancing comment. Um, it's obviously a, a charged uh, moral situation. Um, and, I, and I think that it's important that you consider the, the realities of war um, as we look at who we're detaining. Um, and uh, I, I think that it's... Um, I think that Obama uh, needs to work more closely with Congress if he were to get, well, whoever is to be reelected just needs to work more closely uh, with Congress because I think we're on a similar page that uh, we need to find a more sturdy moral ground to stand on.